Well, good morning. 444. Yeah, I've been awake uh, for a while again, trying to uh, catch up a little bit on emails. Thank God they slowed down. L last night they were considerably slower than they were in the early part of the day. I probably got, I, I was saying to my family last night, I probably got 2,000 birthday wishes, but it's probably more between one and 2,000. Uh, as near as I can figure out, there were page after page of Gmail <laughs> emails that arrived just yesterday alone. And most of them were birthday greetings. And I thank everyone. I only uh, said like and thanks on those that actually appeared on the my Facebook wall. Thank God they didn't put everything on my Facebook wall. Uh, I don't know how they made the selection, but uh, those that made it to my wall uh, got a thanks and a like on their greeting to me. Uh, some of the others did not. It was quite a job. Anyway, the um, title for today's uh, video is Papa Ron's Swiss Indo Birthday Surprise. Various Swiss Indo delegates over a period of time had invited me to attend their twice weekly meetings and I finally took them up on it October 7th. My friend Peter Van Runt, who was the one who first invited me into Swiss Indo, was on vacation. We had a good meeting as I shared many things with them. They invited me back. After I recorded the video on my birthday, I checked into the lobby of their internet room to await my admittance to the password protected conference room. An African delegate greeted me and we chatted with each other for several minutes. Others came and went from the lobby, including Peter, who did not even greet me. No one else did either. I waited for someone to bring me into the room as they did last time. Instead, I got this, quote, you were banned permanently from the server by, Peter's email is redacted, that's what, that's what it had, it had it, his private email, you are not a member of this delegation, end quote. Wow. I posted it on Facebook and he sent this, quote, I am the server admin. The whole group called for your ban from the server. Shoot the messenger, Ron Van Dyke, end quote. Yeah, I was quite taken back by, by this very early in the morning uh, correspondence. And as I said, I posted it on Facebook. Now, before I get into to more of this, I do want to say that I had a wonderful lunch with a friend yesterday, and we spent two and a half hours uh, in a really in-depth conversation. Uh, we had a nice meal. He bought my lunch, which was a surprise. I didn't expect that. Um, but he paid for my lunch. Uh, and the and the place where we ate, because it was my birthday, gave me a free screwdriver. So I did get my one screwdriver yesterday. And in the evening, I had uh, a supper with my family uh, for the first time in a, in a while. And my daughter baked me a, a birthday cake. And uh, the grandkids and my son-in-law and my daughter sang happy birthday to me. And uh, we had birthday cake last night. And I was up till pretty late after 11 o'clock uh, going through emails and other things and also uh, trying to get my Windows update to get updated three times in the past week. It, we've tried to update it and, and it will not update. It, it reverts back to the, it can't, I can't remember the word that it uses, but it can't do what it what it's supposed to do to apply the, the new update. So it keeps saying it's going to do it again in a couple of days and as I said I've tried three times and it's failed each time to do the update. I don't know what that, that means. But getting back to the, the topic, I mean Swiss Indo, as I, let me just uh, I, I wrote uh, he, Peter Peter wrote to me after the what I read about uh, Shoot the Messenger or was it after or before? Anyway he said, I do not break into your sessions and deride your efforts on your ambassador. Yet you come to our meeting to deride what we're doing. That's what annoyed the delegates, you calling Swiss Indo a fraud, etc. 
and I wrote I I wrote what I'm reading next before I read that that particular comment they both were about the same time uh, Peter Van Runt I'm sorry but based on communications from several people in the group I find it hard to believe the whole group made this decision I was invited to come into the meeting two weeks ago when you were on vacation and talked at length with those in the meeting room. There were no issues at that time. Uh, and then I, when I saw his comment about calling Swissindo a fraud, I wrote, Whoa! I did not call Swissindo a fraud. Not ever. I have always stood by the vision of Swissindo and the work we all did. Here's the truth. I was talking with one of the delegates and said that the ambassador had looked at the DI, which means um, diplomatic immunity documents, and called them fraudulent. Layered is what he said. I still believe in our vision and think that Swiss Indo has the best plan for transition to a new world that I have seen laid out, and that includes the Dragon family. I've said this repeatedly to the ambassador. I have not put down Swiss Indo or Mr. Sugi, Mr. Sino. And then I wrote, added a comment. It's out in the open now, which is a good thing. It's time we bring everything out into the open. This hiding does not help, in my opinion. And, Peter Van Run, I never broke into any of the Swiss Indo sessions. Sitting in the lobby does not equate to being in, uh, breaking into a closed session for which I do not even have a password. To state that I broke in is simply not factual. And I don't think there were any more. Oh, no, he did break one more. The, dele the delegation asked me to remove you from the server. The standard ban message from the server reads that message. I didn't even realize that message was attached to the ban. So, so, so aim it all at me if you like. But the people you actually did have a conversation with tonight asked me to do this. And the message is standard, not personal. Uh, and I wrote, okay, see, I'm reading it all, but of, of his and my comments. There's other comments as well. I only spoke with one individual in the lobby before she went into the closed meeting. I hardly think she is the one, although another individual who was in the lobby might have been the one. I guess it doesn't matter, does it? While I appreciate what you do, all of you, some of you do not appreciate my efforts that will continue until... Uh, we have the world we envision. I did get some comments from Swiss Indo delegates after this thing, private messages, and uh, not everybody is in agreement with what happened. I just want to point that out. And I, I, I'm absolutely dumbfounded if the lady that I was talking to from the African delegation is the one that made made an uproar. She might have reported, but I, I have the feeling that someone else who I know was present in the lobby for a, a period of time during the other lady's discussion with me, uh, I have a feeling she probably was the one that made the biggest uproar since uh, she joined with one of the other Swiss, Ind Swiss Indo delegates at one point in uh, leveling an attack at me. Uh, but any, in any case, um, I wish things like this wouldn't happen, but I, as I said in one of the comments, it's good that, that, that it's brought out into the open. And it's also true what I said, and the ambassador could bear witness for that. I have always spoken highly of the work that we did as Swiss Indo delegates. And as I said, I believe that this is a, this is a plan that the CVAC system replacing the corporate structure is an actual plan to implement step by step in creating a better world for people, a world that serves the people rather than corporate interests, rather than fic legal fictions, rather than the banking institutions and the government institutions which are de facto and fraudulent in their operation. And I never called Swiss Indo a fraud. Now, when I was arrested, I used uh, my diplomatic community papers uh, as evidence of for, for my to back up my UN ID and my international driving permit. That's the reason that I had those those documents is because I was part I was a Swiss Indo delegate. Anyway, 
uh, the ambassador had asked me to, to, to see the document, so I sent him an, uh, a, an electronic copy of them. I didn't send him the physical papers that were printed out. And he is an expert in forensics. I mean, that's part of his training. And he showed me how the documents were layered. And he said, any, any forensic uh, person is going to recognize, not necessarily in the printed version, but in the electronic version, you can see how they're layered. And he showed me step by step how they were layered. And I, re I and the other delegates received these documents from Swiss Indo in good faith. We did not create the documents for ourselves. They were created for us by a team in Indonesia, apparently. I mean, as far as I know, uh, that's how they, that's where the origin came from. In any case, I did not call Swiss Indo fraudulent. The delegates that work for Swiss Indo, like me, have had and still have good intentions to make a better world. Now, there are people in Swiss Indo that like to lord it over others. And, and that's some of, one of the things that we talked about two weeks ago is the effort of Swiss Indo. And, they, and, and we were told then in that discussion that they cannot remove, Mr. Sugi will not allow the removal of any delegate. So how they managed to remove me as a delegate is beyond me. I mean, I've gotten no such notification from Mr. Sugi or from Mr. Aprianto in Indonesia. Only this, this from from the very man who invited me into Swiss Indo in the first place. And the person who led the meeting two weeks ago has a higher rank in the structure of Swiss Indo than Peter Van Runt does, although they are one one of it's the it's Peter's it's the one above Peter who ran that meeting and he had no problem with me being there and was very gracious and courteous and, and we talked about many things and, and I'm sure I can't remember everything that was said in that meeting, but I'm pretty sure we talked about the, the, the Dragon family and the fact that the ambassador, you know, uh, well, I, I know we talked about the fact that the ambassador does not see Mr. Sugi as being the owner of any funds, that he's merely the keeper for the Dragon family. And uh, he has said that many, many times, that he does not own them and he has no power of distribution of those funds without the family's consent. Now these are things that that I've been told over the communication time since April of talking with the ambassador and other members of the Dragon family. What do what does Ron know is the actual truth? Not a whole lot. Be even though I've seen pictures and documents and talked to various people, I have no way of actually confirming a lot of things. I take things at face value because that's what I can do. And as I said in yesterday's video, I have developed a wonderful uh, relationship, as it were, with the ambassador. Uh, and he and I have spent countless hours uh, communicating with each other in a very uh, open and vulnerable way. We have been very honest with each other about our strengths and our weaknesses and our and most importantly our experiences and our perceptions. Uh, even though we have different religious perceptions, we have no problem communicating with each other at that level. And I, and I was shocked that Peter, my friend, would even allow uh, the delegates, I don't know how many delegates voted, I mean some of the delegates in there were people that I consider very close friends, some of the ones that were that were present in that room before I was uh, rudely kicked out of the of the whole internet thing, the whole thing shut down. I can't I don't even have access to that program anymore in the, in that particular room that I had been in since since last year, since uh, over over a year I had I had had access to that room. I was never given the password for the for the delegates conference room. Uh, but in any case, I, as I said, I had been invited to come and participate in these meetings and had promised that I would that I would check in at least every other week. And they thought that that was good. That's why I checked in on my birthday. It was two weeks to the day that I had been with them last. Anyway, I really want all of these people 
everywhere in the world that have a vision for a better world and acknowledge the fact that the corporate structure of our current world doesn't work. It's dysfunctional. It's, it's actually criminal in its operation. We need to own that, that we're living in a criminal system. And we need, those of us that want to change that, need to be able to work together and stop this craziness of attacking. I have never attacked Swiss Indo, certainly not the vision, and not Mr. Sugi either. Now, the ambassador has, has a real problem, and others had a real problem with him claiming to be the king of kings, the special one, more special than other people. That's what the, that's what the ambassador always decries. But yet, even the family has special ones, the, the, the emperor or the old man special ones that are more special than everyone else. We've got to get rid of this idea of more special than anyone else. Now there is structure and we have to work as much as we can within the existing structure to defeat it. That's what the OPPD did. It used the Uniform Commercial Code to foreclose on the de facto structure, the de facto corporate structure that's present and poisoning the entire planet with its insanity, with its psychopathy, with its sociopathy, with its uh, eugenics programs and all the other programs to d diminish the world population. We've got to work together, folks. We've got to get on the same page. Please, please. I was recognized as Papa Sugi's father in a previous life. That's public information on my videos. I would hope that all of those in Swiss Indo, including Papa Sugi, would, would, would recognize my heart and see that I'm trying to do the best for the people. And I'm trying to get the, the vision accomplished of a world that works for everyone. That's always been my vision before I ever heard of Swiss Indo, before I ever heard of the Dragon Family. That was my vision. It remains my vision. It will remain my vision. And I will not compromise myself to anybody trying to tell me what to do, what I can or can't say, or, you know, I'm going to share my truth. That's all I have to offer is my truth, my perceptions. I'm not always right, but I do commit to being as honest as I'm capable of being at all times with all people. I don't want to bullshit anybody, and I don't want to uh, enter into arguments as much as I can avoid it. But anyway, that's my message for, t for today, the day after, well, it's actually, it is the day after my birthday when I'm recording this, but of course it's for the following day. And today I have another question and answer session with the Red Dragon and um, uh, I think that might be the last one of that kind for a while. I, I don't I don't know. But in any case, uh, thank you for listening. And folks, please, let's change the world. Let's co-create together a better world. Thank you. Namaste.